Good afternoon and welcome to Noonday Meditation and Contemplative Prayer Power Hour. My name is Martin Coward and we have been gathering here in this virtual sanctuary for over a year as a refuge, as a place to, as a sanctuary, a place to go and love and support each other through the pandemic initially. And now as we're going to the other side of that, we're beginning to see some light at the end of that tunnel. We're, we're talking about, well, what do we do with that? We've gotten through this. Right. <laughs> How do we take what we've learned and, and, and grow and build a world that we all want to live in? And uh, I'm, I'm so excited to, that today, one, we've been celebrating women all the month of March. Uh, and I'm so excited to have one of my dearest friends, Janet Neal, uh, the superb woman who has been a friend of mine for quite a while. And she's a fellow speaker and coach, and uh, I'm so glad that she's going to be here with us today as we're celebrating Janet, as we're celebrating women, and she's got some very good, we've done workshops together, and I can tell you, she's got some really great insight on the power of just being. You know, when we stop doing so much, and we just get into being, being our authentic self, we can step into that really creative power and that creative energy of the authentic self. That's when the joy, that's when the fun begins, right? So I'm going to I'm going to get quiet. And again, we encourage people to just if, if you're joining us, please just type into the chat and say hello. So I know you're here. I can't tell who's here unless you chat jump in the chat. If you, and we like it as interactive as possible. So if you've got some comments, oh, there we go. There's our dear, you might even know this lady right here, Janet. Uh, Audrey Smaltz from National Speakers Association. She's she's a she's been on here before. She's a dear friend of, of and, and a fellow speaker as well. So. Audrey, thank you for joining us today. Great to have you here. And uh, another woman we're celebrating because she's an amazing, inspiring <laughs> woman. And that is. So, Janet, I'm going to hush up because I've talked enough already. You know, we speak if we love to talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Give me a platform. There you go. <laughs> Give me a platform here. We got somebody else on say hello. Hello. Hello, sir. I am from Malaysia. What's the topic today? Well, let's, I'm going to just, we're celebrating women. I'm going to introduce. Perfect question, and I'm going to introduce <laughs> Janet, who's our guest, to introduce our topic for today. And there we go. And oh, there's so thank you for joining us. Hello to you, and we're also glad you're here. And uh, just keep the comments coming. Okay, Janet, take it away. Take it away. All right. <laughs> so thank you, first of all, very much, Martin, um, for inviting me to join you here. Um, <laughs> this is really fun. Uh, is fun you know, <laughs> as a as a fellow speaker, yes. Give me a platform. I could just keep going. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll start with a little bit of background yeah, about me and how I got to how I got, to, to how I got here. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, I like to say that um, I was one of those women who totally bought into that concept of being a superwoman. That that was the ideal. That in order to um, really make it. Um, you had to do everything, do it by yourself, and do it perfectly. I did it. And I heard Michelle Obama talk, um, and she was saying she could, she considered herself a box checker. And it's the same thing. It's like, all right, there's this invisible um, list, and then you have to go through and check, 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 check um, everything off the list in order to be accepted, perfect, whatever. I was there. Um, so if you looked at my life on paper, it looked absolutely perfect. I um, was working for a major corporation. I was married to a successful man. We had a big, beautiful house in the suburbs. We had a, a house in Martha's Vineyard, three dogs, um, <laughs> three children. It was just, it was the perfect life. Um, and I did not know who I was. I was totally empty inside. It was, um, I, and I couldn't figure it out because I was doing everything I should do. And I realized that my whole life had been according to the should. I could tell you what you wanted me to do or what anybody else wanted me to do, but I, I didn't know myself. I was totally disconnected from who I was, my feelings, everything. Um, and if a feeling started to pop up, I had to find a way to push it back down because I didn't know how to deal with feelings. I, it, you know, they were just a foreign thing to me. And so 
um, I did what a, a lot of people do who can't deal with feelings is, um, you know, I found ways to numb it all out. And that was my life. I was on the outside. I was very um, polished and very successful, quote unquote. Um, and I was numb on the inside. It was kind of like one of those movie sets that looked great on one side and there's nothing on the back. And there was a series of things that happened to me at work um, that um, I had succeeded in getting a major corporation as a client, multiple million dollar deal. Um, and it was all because of me and my manager smelled money and came rushing in and took all of the credit for it. And there was literally a line item congratulating her with me in parentheses saying with Janet's help. And I was like, oh, no, oh no, this is not gonna work. <laughs> and that was that was one of those times when I felt that the universe, you know, I, the universe talks to you and um, it comes in three different ways. First of all, there's a whisper. Um, I wouldn't even hear that whisper. <laughs> It just, bless you, um, it just it's like a gnat, right? I didn't even hear that. So then the next thing would be coming around and tap you on the shoulder. And I'd be like, I got this, get out of here. And it wasn't until the two by four that I would finally go, oh, okay. So this was the beginning of the two by four. And there were a series of things that happened to me at work that I was like, I, it woke me up. I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I just felt that if I didn't make a change in my life, I was going to get sick. I just, I knew it. I was going to get sick. Um, and so I went to my husband at the time and said, um, I need to, I, I need to make a change. I need to get out of this job. I need to do something else. And he went, mm, no. And I went, excuse me? <laughs> he said, no, no, you, you got a good job. You know, it works out well. I think you just stay. And I thought, mm -hmm. and so then I go, because I needed permission. So then I go to my parents. My parents are like, oh, no, you've got a good job. You're doing well at it. Why would you change? Then I talked to my neighbors. Nobody supported me. Nobody thought it was a good idea. And for the first time in my life, I listened to that voice inside that went, you got to get out of here. And as soon as I went, nope, I'm going to leave. I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to leave. It's Soon as I did that and let go completely, I got a call from a headhunter. I had never in my life gotten a call from a headhunter. And the headhunter called and and it ended up in a job that was better than the job that I had. I was only there for like three years, but it was with a startup company. It allowed me to see how to start a company. Um, to get all those skills so that in three years, I knew it was time for me to start my own business. And I had all this experience. So when I went to start my own business, what I did is I went back to look and see what are my skills? What are my talents? What are the things that I'm passionate about? And one was teaching. I, I was a teacher before I got into corporate life. And I feel I'm a natural teacher. The other was I, when I was um, working, I worked at IBM and I started the first work-life balance initiative for IBM back in the mid nineties. Um, before I even heard the term work-life balance, I had this manager that I was working for who was very, very ahead of his time. And he saw me coming back from maternity leave with three little kids and um, working full time. And he said, Janet, I'd like you to start a work-life balance on this ship. But I believe that a balanced employee is a productive employee. I went, yes, okay, um, because I'm the, the good employee, right? <laughs> so I started this cross-functional, cross-level um, <coughs> group of employees. And we just brainstormed on um, how can we have the working when we're at work and home when we're home? How can we find some sort of a balance in our lives? That was my passion, far more than selling computers. <laughs> and so when I went to dec decide what do I want to do with my life when I'm going to start my own business, I went back to that. I developed a methodology. I developed a course and thought I could do this. I can go and 
market this to Fortune 500 companies. And that's how I started doing training for Fortune 500 companies. That led to me getting certified as a coach. Um, so I do the coaching and the training that led to me doing speaking engagements. Um, and uh, that led to a whole bunch of things. And that led to the superb woman because the superb woman um, came from this belief that all the way back to the beginning, the superwoman wasn't working. There were too many of us that were just lemmings, just following down this path that, you know, oh, this is what I should do, right? And it served no one. And it just reser resulted in burnout and frustration. And there's a lot of energy out there that's not being used um, that, that we all could use. And I learned from my own experience, it's when I learned to be myself, when I learned to take that time and tap into who I was, what's important to me, what my gifts are, that's when I started moving forward. That's when I was productive. Um, so it wasn't about being a superwoman. It was about being a superb woman. It's all about the be. And that's how I got to where I am today. I love that. Yes, I, I am. One of the things that I that I do to get into be my being, and, and the, the name for my being, my divine presence. Yours is the superb woman. Mine is Joy, the wise woman. Right. <laughs> I think I've told you before. So what I suggest I do for myself is that I, I mean I have a formal morning practice. I call it the Power Hour. But it starts with the most important thing, and that is I do the simplest and the easiest thing I can to just be still. Yeah. I go and get my coffee in the morning. I just had a cooking client. I said, just what you got, all you got to do, don't make it any harder than this. Just go get whatever you like to drink in the morning. Go find your favorite place to sit. Enjoy your coffee and just be still and listen for that divine presence to arrive. Exactly. And it will. It will. Yeah. It's, it's, it's who you are. And if you just get quiet enough and still enough, Quiet the egoic mind of its agenda for the day. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> which, really? <laughs> which is which it always has. It has a big agenda every day. Then I can can get still enough, and that to do list is I don't have a to do list anymore. Actually, I mm -hmm. have. I mean, I have things that I want to accomplish, of course, but it's not like I have to get those done. What I have to do, right. I don't have to do anything. That's the point. I don't have to mm -hmm, do mm -hmm. anything, but and, and I, except show up with love and gratitude for life and be present. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. Yep. And then and then I'm guided by that next step. Yep. By the, yep. By, by, by that by in your case the superb woman. Yeah. <laughs> Within you, yeah. divine presence, and mm -hmm. that's a very creative, powerful source we all have within us. An authentic. I mean, we human beings are pretty amazing when we're connected to that source of, of power. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and what I um, discovered was um, another one of those times where I would do the same thing where I would get quiet and, and um, actually it's two things. It's like either I get quiet or I do something to distract my physical body so that my subconscious can take over. So I'm really very productive when I'm cleaning a closet, when I'm doing something yeah. that is nothing. I, it's mindless work. All of a sudden, an idea will pop in. Or actually, in the shower is the best <laughs> time that I get yeah. the best ideas in the shower. Yes. So it's like when you're doing this mind, your body is busy doing something, and that's when I allow it. And so, um, what I found, uh, where was I going with this whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> I was all excited about this story. Um, <laughs> so I can't even remember. We'll come back to it. <laughs> well, well, I think we were saying, and I, I'm agreeing with you, is that sometimes it's like, for me, sometimes it's like, I, I'm a chef, I'm a cook. And so, and that's uh -huh. a real transform. And I get to see things transform in a very short period of time. And I don't have to think at all. I don't have to do yeah, anything. Exactly. As a matter of fact, the less thinking I do, the, 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 better. More, the, yeah. the better it is. The, the more, yeah. All of a sudden, the food comes alive. But also, yeah. I get all sorts of creative ideas while yeah. I'm cooking. Oh, this, yeah. is what I, this, is, this is what I'm going. This is what I'm going to talk about tomorrow on my show. I'm this. Is yeah. what, 
Joy the Wise Woman has not only helping me cook my meal, but she's coming up with all sorts of ideas that she wants to do. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so now I remember what I was going to say. Okay, good. So, it was during one of these times, I would have this the, the little voice that now I hear and I don't <laughs> ignore, would say, um, do a show. And this was, I don't know, 10 years ago. And they said, do a show. And I'm like, do a show. What do, I, what do I know about doing a show? So it's like, yeah, 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 whatever. So then two times, if something happens three times, then it's like, I have to do it. So two times I heard the do a show and I'm like, okay, I'm not even going to wait for the third because I know this is going to come back. So I'm like, well, how do I do it? I don't know how to do a show. So, so the only thing I just knew was like one of my kids showed me at the time on how to use um, Google, Google, something google live or whatever it was at the time like one of the first streaming live things google hangouts i think is what it was and so i thought oh, all right well i'm going to what am i going to do all right i'm going to interview a woman who's an example of a superb woman this thing about someone who's taking the time to understand who she is is tapped into this and is created and is living a life a powerful life because of it and i thought then i'll uh, what do I do? I'll put it on YouTube and then I can say, okay, when I'm talking, I can go, go to YouTube and you can see this woman. This is yeah. an example. So I thought I'd do one, two, maybe three of them, right? So I was fortunate enough that once I made the decision, I would be introduced to all these amazing women. Um, and so I'd say, oh, would you like to be on a show? And they're like, yeah. So I started a YouTube channel similar to you and I've done over 70 interviews. It was like, it just, you know, I thought, okay, I think I'm done now. And then somebody else would be introduced to me. I'm like, well, I guess we got to do another one. But, um, but that's what happens when you are open, when you just get quiet and you hear that voice and you acknowledge it and then you act on it, um, it, it you're in the flow. And, I, and I, 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 this reminds me of exactly why you're here today. So I, <laughs> the first week I, the, I started celebrating women on International Women's Day. And mm -hmm. I just was celebrating poets. I said, I decided I'm going to celebrate, uh, I think I celebrated Maya Angelou. And I read, I read her poem. And then mm. the next week I read um, Amanda Gorman's poem. The, 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 oh, yeah. So, and then I did Mary Oliver. And then I thought, who am I going to? I thought, oh, my cousin is the inaugural poet lord of Orlando, Florida. I'm going to ask her to be on my wow. show. Wow. And she loved it. So she came on my show. And Very I had so cool. much fun with her on the show. Then that, that Saturday morning, I was sitting in, in my space being, you know, with my coffee. And yeah. it said, why don't you just, I started, why don't you just send out a little text to invite a lot of extraordinary women doing ordinary things that inspire us and invite uh -huh. and you were on my list. And so I started just sending out this invitation. Would you like to be on my, and everybody wanted to, and everybody. <laughs> people say, I'd love to, I'm like, fantastic. Yeah. And so yeah. that's how this evolved. And yeah. uh, so it's just about, you're right. It's just about, I was just being present and listening to that voice. And all of a sudden yeah. now we're here having some fun and you're inspiring women with your story and what you're doing. And I, I just, I, it's just how the world, it's, it's, it's a much more fun way to live than all those shoulds I should be doing. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, uh, it's not as difficult, you know, it's like if you're trying to, to meet somebody else's expectations, that's a lot of work. Uh -huh. um, and I, I think I'm too lazy for that. Right. <laughs> Been there, done that. I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> well, you know, is you know when we, I was talking to someone, my client this morning about overwhelm, and oh, overwhelm, yeah. overwhelm is actually a first world privilege because we have we've gone from having yeah, from despair of not having any solutions or options to having the universe present us with an abundance of solutions. Yeah. Options. So we go into fear about what if we take the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> what if we take the wrong yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That'd be the wrong yeah. one, and I won't get what I want, you know? So mm -hmm. I said, well, so what, what do we do? We said we, we sit down and we get present with ourselves, and we thank the universe. Oh, I am mm -hmm. so grateful for all these options that you right. gave me. 
The only mm-hmm. problem is you've given me so many, I don't know which one to right. take. Right. <laughs> Will you help me? So then I mm-hmm. surrender that and I, and, I, and, I, and I say, feel your way into the next thing. And it should be light, the lightest and the easiest because the ego, mm-hmm. you need to struggle. But the heart, yeah. you need to take the lightest. And like Jesus says, my yoke is easy and the burden is light. That's what mm. that means to follow that path of least resistance. That's the yeah. path of the heart. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're mm-hmm. doing and that's what you're helping your clients do. And right. that's what we're doing right now. When you're in that flow of being, it isn't hard work. You know, right. Putting right. these shows together this month of March is just leading me to more abundance. And I now now my idea for the month of of April is to okay. invite gay, bi, trans men that I serve extraordinary GBTQ men to come who and share their stories. Oh, and I'm excited fabulous. about that. So it's yeah. really about getting it. And it's so easy. It's not hard. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's fabulous. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell us a little bit about, about the kind of what, the way you, how your programs work, you know, when you work with someone, do you, do you, do you, do you still do one-on-one coaching or do you do, one to many coaching or how, how, how do you work today, Janet? Um, how do I work today? Yeah, <laughs> it'll be different than tomorrow. Well, right I, now, yeah, how are you, yeah. how are you helping women to, 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 to get, and you yeah. work exclusively so, so with women? So I actually have, um, no, I don't work exclusively with women. So um, that is my sweet spot. Right. That's where I put my focus. And um, here's an interesting thing about focus. And I learned this through my coaching training that I went through that, um, I, you know, you can come out of coaching and going, I can help everybody. And I probably can. Um, however, when you put that kind of energy out into the universe, it just gets very diffused. Um, and so it's like you say, I can do everything and then nobody comes. And so the more specific specific you can get um, and put that energy, specific energy out there, um, people are drawn to that focus. Right. Um, and it and it may not be like, so I've had men and I've had um, both men and women and all different kinds of ages and stages of life. Um, my primary focus is women who feel stuck, who know they need to make a change they don't know what to what or even how to start the process. So that's my sweet spot. Mm-hmm. That being said, um, I currently have a gentleman who is um, nearing retirement and trying to figure out what how to do that. Um, I do speaking engagements um, and I it seems to be I'm being drawn to like the retirement community. Of people who are rewiring their lives and trying to figure out how do I go from here to here? How do I make this change in my life? That's a wonderful so, thing to do. Yeah. Right? So that's one community that I'm working with. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, I find this so fascinating, is I've started a business where I work, my partner and I work with um, soon to be college graduates or those who have just graduated from college who are lost, who are like, I just went through college and uh, I don't know what I wanna do. And they're sitting on their parents' couch and their parents are like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids are stuck and they don't know how to do hashtag adulting. Um, and so that's another uh, um, group that I'm working with as well. Um, so I do the one-on-one coaching. Um, depending on the needs. The the common theme is I need to make a change. I don't know how to do it. I don't know where I want to go. Um, and then I do speaking engagements. I do corporate training. Um, I was doing a lot of that and I love that. That's the ham, the teacher in me loves to get up in front and do the corporate training. Um, and that's evolved as you can imagine um, <laughs> in the last year. So I do a lot of online training now. Um, and then I, you know, I have my book, um, written two books and have a children's book that I'm trying to get out there, um, published right now. And, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. 
wow, what a, it's, it, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing when we stop doing and just start being. <laughs> what, exactly. What that divine presence will get us get us into. Look at look at the just the cornucopia of things where you get to oh, I know. Your, you get to make a contribution to the world in various areas. I love I love the idea of the, I I really picked up on the idea of where I think in, in, as people who are retiring, particularly for people who are who are so used to to being judging their be. worth by what they do yes. all day long. Oh my goodness. And to be able to yeah. settle into being is got to be so that they can really truly embrace and enjoy those the, the remaining years of their life, which can be the most joyful. I, I mean I exactly I, I do that a lot with, with, with entrepreneurs who who are who really, you know, say, well you know what you might have the you may actually be preparing yourself for the most exciting job in your entire life. Yeah. Because you'll be doing something that you love and you can enjoy it. I mean, you can make a lot of money if you enjoy doing what you love. Yeah. Right? And and that and that's 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 the key, you know. So I think that's 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 exciting and particularly and, and since you if you like going into uh, communities, uh, mm -hmm. going into retirement communities and and, and and being there to love and care and support people who are lost and afraid because they they've gone from working in a corporate world where all right. of their influence and all of their sense of power came yep. from the job to being in a place now where I don't even know who I am, you know. I, you know, Martin, I, I discovered this uh, firsthand back in 2008. I was um, doing coaching um, with a woman who had a coaching company and she wanted me, she was out in Colorado and she wanted me to start the New York City um, chapter of her company. And that was when there were all those layoffs. If you remember back to 2008, mm -hmm. a little, yeah, couple, couple corporate jobs went away. Um, <laughs> yes, and, and primarily the focus though, is primarily men. Um, and I learned how tied um, these men's egos, their sense of self was tied to the job. And when they didn't have that job, devastating it wasn't yes. just financially devastating it was emotionally devastating there was such a void there um and so i really that was quite an eye-opener to me i learned that back then um and so i think i've learned that to apply that um in all the coaching that i do and yes the going into retirement is exactly the same thing even if you want want to retire it's scary yeah. It's scary if you don't know what's next. It's a major change in your life. It's huge. It is gigantic. Yep. You know, yep. and because um, and, and the imposter syndrome says you never did, you didn't do enough in your in your, right. in your world. Even though you might have been the CEO <laughs> exactly. of a major corporation, it was never enough. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. You know, never, I know. Enough, never enough. Never enough. It's always the same old, the same old. Well, I love that. I, I want to just tell. You know, people ask me. You know, one thing I've got really clear about is um, over the over. I, I'll share with you kind of how I got into being a prosperity coach for gay by trans men. Mm -hmm. Was during the pandemic last year, uh, I extended my, my contracts with all of my clients, men and women. I had I had a number of coaching clients, and I said, you know what, I don't know how, I don't know what this is, but I'm we're in this together, so I'm going to extend everybody's contracts at the end of the year and no charge. It's all on me. Because we're in this, okay. together. we're in this together. And I'm so glad I did because it gave me the, the it gave me the ability to kind of experiment with some coaching things that I had mm. only up until now kind of played with. And as you, as you as you know, I'm I've I got 20 years of experience as a shadow worker, working largely okay. with men. Yep. And, and what I and so what I did, I created this thing called the shadow work method, where I, I took the, the, that modality, the contemplative prayer modality, and the um and, and my spiritual wisdom experience. Mm -hmm. And put it in together, something, and I created something called the shadow work method. And hmm. it's amazing at how I can get breakthroughs so quickly, hmm. putting all those things together. But what I've learned, this is this is interesting. All of my shadow work is with men, and I because I have a really understanding of the interior landscape of men. When I so? try <laughs> this with women, it backfires every single time. Isn't that time. interesting? Because wow. when I'm saying something to, to sometimes to women that I think is going to support them and show them, point them to something true, they get offended that I'm talking about them. They don't understand that I'm pointing to their shadow. They think it's them, uh, and they get very defensive. So I just learned that you know what, this is my wheelhouse. 
I am, right. I am, a, I am really good at shadow work with men. Yep. I'm not a therapist. I don't understand anything else about it. I just know that one thing. Yeah. So I, yep. like you said before about your intention and being focused, I focus on who I can help and how I can yep. help. And I just stay in that lane. So people are, why, don't, why don't, are you excluding women? I said, no, I just know that that's right, exactly. What, it's not about excluding them. I just, I just don't know how to help them. That's my own awareness that I don't have that skill that works with women the way it works with men. And yep. so I just hold that. I just, I just wouldn't want to say it publicly because I don't even understand why I do it. Why don't you, why you just work with gay by trans men? I said, well, that's, that's the one, those are the people I know the most, you know, yep. as long as I can You're help trying. That's, that's my tribe. So that's why yep. I do that. So, yep. so, this is, exactly. so, so now we're going to get into a little heart space and we're going to do a little okay. questions. I can't believe we've gone a half hour already. That's amazing. I know. <laughs> we could <laughs> talk forever. We could. We <laughs> have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let me get my timer out here real quick and we will get into some heart space for about 20 minutes uh, and um, get that going. Timer, timer, start. So what I'd like to start with is one, raise our hands in the air. Raise your hands up there. And we're doing that for two reasons today. We're doing it because we're celebrating women, we're celebrating Janet, but also that's our life energy. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's life energy. That's what raised your hands. It's not, you can have all the biggest muscles in the world, but if you don't have that spark of life, mm -hmm. your hands are not going up in the air. So that's just mm -hmm. to remind us just how close the divine is. It is mm -hmm. We are the divine. So let's get even closer as we begin to slow down a little bit, sit up tall, and just begin to go from looking outward to using the breath to going inside of ourselves. And a little technique that I'll teach you is, is to slow down the thinking, is to be able to slow down the vibration in the back of our tongue. When we think, our tongue vibrates a little bit. And so what I do is I take the tip of my tongue and I rest it on the roof of my mouth just behind my front teeth. And I relax my, open my mouth slightly and relax my jaw. And as I'm breathing, I am allowing the breath to gently massage the back of my tongue. And as I do that, it slows down the thinking. So just try that for a second. Just tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Just relax it there. Slightly part your lips and relax your jaw and just allow the breath, just focus on the breath going in and going out and just relaxing and massaging the back of the tongue. Just try that naturally for a few minutes. And just notice how that begins to bring us focused onto the interior of our throat, of our insides, and out of our head. And we're going to do three what I call belly breaths. The idea of the belly breath is to have use the belly muscles to pull the breath deeper inside of us to anchor us into our into our being. So. What's going to happen? You're going to breathe in through the nose. You're going to breathe down your throat, massage the tongue, open the heart, and with your belt, your muscles pull the breath deep into your belly and anchor it. Hold it just for a second, and then we're going to ease it out. Ready? In through the nose, down the throat, open the heart, pull it deeper into the belly, and just let it go. And as you let the breath go, let every thought, every opinion, every judgment, every belief, every should, everything in your mind, all that nonsense, just let it go with the breath. And go back to naturally breathing for a moment. And feel your way into that new spaciousness. Feel your way into that belly of yours, into that breath, into the belly, into that anchor that's grounding you into the seat, into your body. 
to make that connection. And just breathe. And just notice what might be coming up in your thinking. Notice any emotions you might be having in your body. Maybe they're feelings of joy, gratitude, peace, anger, shame. Hold on to nothing, just, just let them be there. Just accept them, welcome them, and feel them. Just feel them fully. As you get more and more present to your interior landscape. We're gonna do another belly breath. Remember, it's with your belly muscles, pull the breath in through the nose, down the throat, massage the back of the tongue, open your heart, and pull the breath deep into your belly. Ready? Hold it. Oh, and just let it all go, like you're deflating a balloon, and everything with it, every thought, every opinion, every judgment, everything you think is good or bad, right or wrong, hold on to nothing, let it all go. And just become still. And just be. Just be still. Nothing you have to do. Except breathe. And open your heart. Allow the breath to open the heart a little more fully. Create a little more space in your belly. We're going to do one more belly breath, and then I'm going to be still. And you're going to hear some interval bells throughout the next few minutes. And they're there just to wake us up from our thinking. So here we go. One last big belly breath. In through the nose, down the throat, into the belly. Here we go. Now just let it all go. Oh, and let every thread of thought go with it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Fall into the sweetness of not knowing. And there's one of those sweet wake up bells to wake us from our thinking, our planning, our worrying. And the invitation is just to let it go and fall back into the sweetness of unconditional love. Love for ourselves, love for each other. Pure love, light, energy.
There's that sweet wake up bell again to wake us up from our thinking, our planning, our worrying. The invitation is just to thank your brilliant brain for all its work and let it go. And just fall back into the stillness of unconditional love.
Oh, there's that sweet wake up bell one more time to wake us up from our thinking so we can return to the breath. Turn your focus back to the breath, going inside, relaxing the tongue, expanding the heart, anchoring it into your belly, and really allow yourself to focus on the breath. Letting go of every thought, every opinion, every judgment. Just being still with the breath. And there's our final bell. Bring us back to the material world. <laughs> wow, well, how are you feeling? <laughs> Very relaxed. Sometimes the wake up bell is to wake us up from our sleeping. <laughs> Sometimes oh. they get so relaxed we fall asleep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's part of I've been doing this for 40 years and I still think and I still fall asleep. <laughs> that's why I had that wake up bell. Because it, yeah. it does bring me back into what I'm here to do, and that's just be still and listen. Yeah. So I wanted to just ask you um to give our audience one tip, trick, or technique or tool that they could use when they're finding themselves stuck. How First thing I always do with my clients is I have them take a look at their values because unless you have really identified your values, um, how do you know what's important to you and whose life are you living? And so what I have done in the past is, and I have, if anyone is interested, um, um, I don't know how best to do that, but I can get them a little values clarification exercise um, that I take my clients through and um, have them kind of identify their top 
10 values. And values to me are those things, they're almost like the building blocks of your life. It's like who you are, what's important to you, regardless of how old you are. So if you value friendship when you're a kid, you will value friendship when you're an adult. It may change in priority, but it's still who you are. Um, honesty. If you value honesty at some point in your life, you're going to, if it's truly your value, it will be there your entire life. So what I have done is um, I have people identify their top 10 values, write them down, because that just solidifies it even more in mm -hmm. your brain. And then if you want it uh, solidified even more, um, say it out loud to another person. Um, that brings it home even more. And then I've had people um, tell me that they've put them on their refrigerators or on their desk or something like that. So that when you have to go to make a decision, that's your roadmap right there. You just look at it and go, does this align with my values? If it doesn't, there's your answer. Um, and so, yeah, so that's that's what where I always start with clients is with the values, and then we'll go from there. All right. And then one other thing is if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for people to find you, Janet? Um, you can go to my website, thesuperbwoman.com, S-U-P-E-R-B-W-O-M-A-N. <laughs> Um, or if you want to reach out to me, it's Janet at the superb com. Okay. Very good. Do you have a Facebook presence of any kind? I do. Is that just um, the, Neal, is it? There's a, the superb woman group? Um, you can get to me that way or Janet M. Neal. Okay. That's good. I think today it's just it's, it's, it's the easiest way to remember it is like, if they can remember you, then they'll get that. Right. Too, so. Exactly. And exactly. uh, I know that people might want to take that exercise on their values because, yeah, I would yeah. agree that, that that's a that's a, um, that's a great way when we when we get in line with our values then everything else will fall in line with that. So, well, exactly. uh, I know Audrey said thank you to both of us. Thank you, Audrey, for being with us today and get, spending your lunchtime with Janet and myself. Thank you, Audrey. It's been, a, it's been a lot of fun uh, being on here with you today, Janet. What a what a blast! This has been a, a joy. <laughs> That's great. It's been a lot of I'm fun. Kind of new, we'd have fun. I haven't seen we haven't seen each other in a while since because of COVID. I know, so probably a year. Probably a year. <laughs> so it's just a joy to see you. Uh, okay. Stick around for one second. I'm just going to close this out here, and then we'll come we'll come back to stage and we'll have a chat for a second. So yeah. I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and I want to thank Janet for being with us. Um, if again, if you if you're um, a gay, bi, or trans man, and you are wanting a place, a safe place to do some work, I've created a, a Facebook group specifically for us, specifically to do shadow work. And if you don't know what that is, join us and find out because that's where the juicy stuff really is. <laughs> and um, that's how we make that's how we make the breakthroughs. If we want to make some breakthroughs, we got to look at the dark mm -hmm. stuff. We can't just mm -hmm. seriously bypass it. So if you're a gay, bi, trans man. Uh, Join us. It's, uh, there's a link somewhere near the, near this video somewhere. I don't quite know where it is on the page, but there's the one close. And I will welcome you in with open arms. And in the meantime, may love and prosperity prevail. Thank you for being here.